Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 Bruce Lee scenes that you may have missed. Considering that Bruce Lee is simultaneously known for being one of the greatest martial artists to have ever lived and dying before he ever had a chance to sell out in an Expendables movie, most every cool thing he has ever done on and off film has been painstakingly categorized and listed online. That said, we think there are still a few moments from Bruce Lee's filmography people don't remember or appreciate because sites never want to take the risk of not listing the mirror fight in Enter the Dragon as his best moment. As a result, they tend to gloss over the moments like the ones we're looking at in today's video. Number 10. That time in Marlowe he intimidates a guy by punching all of the furniture in his office. Marlowe is a 1969 noir movie notable mostly for being one of the first American films to feature Bruce Lee in a starring role as Winslow Wong, a hyper-competent mob enforcer rocking the sharpest turtleneck and suit combo this side of a pre-2011 Apple conference. While Lee is only on screen for a few minutes, he makes the most of it by demonstrating his considerable martial arts prowess by punching literally every piece of furniture in the eponymous Marlowe's office to intimidate him into taking a bribe. In just over 30 seconds of screen time, Lee kicks a hole in Marlowe's wall, backhands a coat rack with a coat on it, karate chops his bookshelf in two, scissor kicks a lamp clean off the ceiling, and then punches through a window before striking a martial arts pose that causes a painting to leap off the wall in fright, all while Marlowe is still sat there pointing a gun at him. After utterly failing to intimidate Marlowe, who never moves or shows surprise at Lee destroying half of his office with back fists and knee strikes, Lee then puts on a pair of sunglasses and casually walks straight out of the office through the door he just punched a hole in. If you think a tubby man pushing 40 not being scared of a mob enforcer who just demonstrated the ability to best a coat rack in one-on-one -on -one combat is unrealistic, just remember that later in that same movie, Bruce Lee, number 9, is tricked into flying kicking his way out of a five-story building when someone calls him gay. After proving that he possesses the not unintimidating ability to punch and kick stationary objects while screaming, Lee's character Winslow Wong makes exactly one more appearance in Marlowe, towards the end of the film when Marlowe is in a fancy restaurant eating and generally not being as cool as Bruce Lee. This time clad in a Colgate white suit and even a fluffier turtleneck, Wong, Bruce Lee, reiterates his offer of a bribe to Marlowe, who, like before, acts indifferent to the fact that he's being threatened by a man who hours earlier demonstrated the ability to kick through a concrete wall. As before, Wong tries to coerce Marlowe by throwing a few kicks and punches inches away from his face. Marlowe responds by leaping onto a nearby ledge and asking if Wong is, and we're not making this up. Are you just a little gay? Enraged, Lee's character delivers a final scream before attempting to kick Marlowe off the edge of the building, only for him to miss and fly aimlessly off the edge down into the street below. So, the next time someone tries to tell you Bruce Lee is the best fighter in history because he beat Chuck Norris in one of his films, remind them that in an earlier film he leapt off a building to his death because someone asked him if he was gay. Speaking of fighting another famous martial artist, who remembers the time that, number 8, Bruce Lee killed Jackie Chan in a less than 4 second fight scene? For anyone who doesn't know, Jackie Chan got his start in film as a stuntman. One of Chan's earliest roles was that of a random thug in Enter the Dragon who attacks Bruce Lee when he isn't wearing a shirt. Noted by movie buffs as the number one cause of broken henchman pelvises in the early 70s. Unlike most of Lee's enemies who are dispatched with crippling but otherwise non-fatal punches to the Swede, Chan's character is elbowed in the gut before having his neck unceremoniously snapped like a dry and possibly malnourished twig. This all happens off-screen while the camera zooms in on Lee's face doing this. But hey, it's not like Lee's foray into television and film was any less demeaning. We mean, how else would you explain him? Number 7. Constantly punching police officers in The Green Hornet The Green Hornet was a TV show from the late 60s in which Bruce Lee played Carto, the ever-reliable and vastly more skilled and charismatic sidekick to the eponymous Green Hornet, an overweight guy in a fedora and domino mask. Fun fact, in Hong Kong, The Green Hornet Show was colloquially known by the locals as The Carto Show because people couldn't believe The Green Hornet was the leader of the two when he didn't really ever do anything in the fight scenes. While The Green Hornet and Carto are ostensibly considered to be heroes, the duo pretend to be villains to better infiltrate the criminal underworld and protect their secret identities, or at the least, we think they pretend, because Carto punches a lot of police officers during the show's 26-episode run. 
On one occasion, Kato runs out of a building screaming like a maniac and violently punches a police officer who isn't looking at him in the groin before following up with a vicious three-hit combo and on another he kicks an officer in the face before knocking him out with a leaping elbow drop to the noggin, both of which seem sort of unnecessary when other episodes show that Kato had access to special throwing darts that can put people to sleep painlessly. Then again, it is kind of great that thanks to this show, we have actual footage of Bruce Lee responding to the commands Come on out with your hands up! With the best part is, this is far from the most bafflingly dumb thing a Bruce Lee character has done, not when there's number six, the scene in Fist of Fury with a double twirling choke slam in it. The dojo scene from Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury, in which Lee's character beats up an entire room full of karate men with scream-assisted punches, kicks, and elbows, is rightly considered one of his best fight scenes. And while we agree that the scene is great, we do think it's weird that most people tend to focus on the part of the fight where Bruce Lee breakdances his way across the floor while slapping people in the foot with nunchucks instead of the part where this happens. If you're having trouble making out what the hell is going on here, that is Bruce Lee performing Zangief's double lariat while holding two fully grown human beings played by dummies. He's holding them by the throats moments before hurling them both a dozen feet across the room. There's no explanation for why Lee's character is able to do this and it's promptly never mentioned again, leading us to assume that he could have ended every fight in the movie with a twirling chokeslam, but chose not to out of some bizarre sense of honor that only let him do it once just to make sure people knew. Speaking of making a statement, though, let's talk about number five, the fight scene in Enter the Dragon where he kicked a guy so hard it broke someone else's arm. Bruce Lee's fight against his nemesis and mullet owner O'Hara in the film Enter the Dragon is easily one of the martial artist's best-known scenes. However, for anyone who has never seen it but is still inexplicably watching this, during the fight, Lee's character, in an effort to punch O'Hara for his role in the death of his sister, punches his ego out of his body with a series of lightning-fast snap jabs to the face and neck before relocating his chin four inches to the left with a backflip. Lee's character then taunts the injured O'Hara into throwing out a flying kick, which she easily dodges by lying down on the floor and kicking O'Hara square in the nutsack. As O'Hara is struggling to stand back up after Lee kicks him again, this time in the face at like a million miles per hour, Lee sprints towards him and puts all his power into a final collarbone-shattering sidekick. According to a later interview with Bob Wall, the guy who played O'Hara, that kick and his reaction of being thrown several feet back is 100% real. To explain, while they were filming that scene, Wall kept asking Lee to kick him as hard as he could because he wanted the fight to look real. When Lee expressed concern for Wall's safety, Wall simply reassured him by saying that he was a professional who knew how to take a hit. Lee, somewhat unconvinced, threw out a few half-assed kicks with no real power behind them, prompting Wall to flub the reaction, forcing them to shoot the scene again. After, like, the sixth time this happened, Lee became frustrated and decided to just give Wall what he wanted and kick him as hard as he could, delivering the kick scene in the film in the next take. Wall, who was totally unprepared for how hard and fast Lee could really kick when he wasn't worried about holding back, was thrown backwards with such force that one of the extras you see trying to catch him broke his arm. Number 4. Way of the Dragon – The Dragon Finds Its Way there's a lot of things we pick up in the alley scene in Way of the Dragon, in which Bruce Lee methodically takes apart an entire gang of knife-wielding thugs with a series of crushing, simultaneous nunchuck hits. But today we'd like to deconstruct what is possibly the most hilariously one-sided and brutal beatdown of his career. More specifically, his fight against this guy. Now we know, judging people by their appearance is mean, and to be fair, this guy does have a knife so he could conceivably pose a threat to, like, a baby or something, but we really don't think the man wearing the tightest pants in the entire world seems like he planned on getting into a knife fight that day. If you don't think we're giving the guy enough credit, this is the face Bruce Lee is making at the exact moment the guy walks towards him with a knife. Lee's character is actually so cocksure he's going to win that as the guy saunters over intent on stabbing him, he actually puts the nunchucks he's holding behind his back. Lee's character then proceeds to use the guy's face as target practice for four consecutive unguarded nunchuck hits. Sure, there are people in Lee's films who get worse beatdowns, but at least they were trying to fight back. This guy just sort of falls towards Lee while unrelenting nunchuck hits rain down on the back of his head at Mach 3. But this is far from Lee's most embarrassing victory, because that honor clearly belongs to the time he… Number 3. Punched a man dressed as a giant cat's clothes off 
You probably think we've got to be lying to you with this entry because you don't remember a scene in one of Bruce Lee's movies where he fights a man dressed as a cat. To which we say, you've clearly never watched that one episode of The Milton Burley Show where he teams up with Adam West's Batman. In the 10 minutes black and white sketch, Lee reprises his role as Kato to assist the Green Hornets while defeating a villain called Fink Pussycat, who looks exactly like a child molester who tried to do that thing where girls wear a headband with the cat's ears on it and call it a Halloween costume. After apprehending Fink Pussycat, Lee then threatens to get him with his kung fu, which he demonstrates by punching a nearby mannequin's head straight off. When Fink tries to run away, Lee and the Green Hornets push him to the floor again and begin ripping his clothes off, all under the watchful eyes of Batman, who enters when the director yells cut to shake Kato's hand for a job well done. An image we want you to keep in mind when you learn about how a decade later Lee was in a movie where he, number two, goes to town on someone's forehead with a rusty saw. The film The Big Boss, sometimes known as Fists of Fury in the West, is regarded as the film that introduced Bruce Lee to both Eastern and Western audiences. With that in mind, you'd probably think there'd be a definitive edition of it on DVD or Blu-ray somewhere, right? As it turns out, though, there isn't, and even the most comprehensive versions have at least some key scenes missing, like the one where Bruce Lee does this. According to film buffs, this scene is taken from a moment that originally occurred during a fight scene where Lee fights some bad guys in an ice factory. Despite graphic stills of this scene existing to date, no known version of the film has ever surfaced still intact, leading to rumors that it was either cut from the original theatrical prints by an overzealous official, or it was simply removed for being too brutal in a film where multiple people are killed with an ice pick. Our personal theory is that audiences simply found it unrealistic that someone with Bruce Lee's physique would need a saw to split someone's face in half. Because in the same movie, there's a scene where… Number 1. Bruce Lee Bears It All This picture crops up every now and again, and it's often either dismissed as a fake or said to originate from a porno that Bruce Lee starred in while he was still a struggling actor, or something like that. The truth is that the image is real, you can't fake those abs, and was cut from a scene in The Big Boss where Lee's character visited a brothel immediately prior to fighting the final boss, and which supposedly included graphic audio of Lee and the prostitute having such vigorous intercourse that a couple in another room peep through a hole in the wall just to see what's going on. But fear not fans of Bruce Lee's abs because while the scene was cut from the movie and will likely never be recovered or restored, part of it still exists in its original form, some of which we're showing here. Now we're going to be honest here, while we think the mirror fight is cool and that it undoubtedly makes Bruce Lee look like a badass, we don't think it can hold a candle to a scene which has been deleted forever because it showed that Bruce Lee was too good at sex. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please give us a like below. Our previous Bruce Lee lists did really well, so we, uh, we made this one because we know you guys are into Bruce Lee. And over there on the right are those lists. One is the top 10 reasons that Bruce Lee may have been a superhuman, and below that, the uh, video about Bruce Lee literally punching too fast to block. So be sure to check those out. Uh, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching.